What's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and this is my review or summary of the Porsche Taycan. As you know, I attended the Taycan event last week in Niagara Falls, Canada. Thank you Porsche. Big shout out to you for the invite and big shout out to Tesserati for uh, including me and allowing me to be their correspondent. This is a recap of my thoughts. Now, the title of the video says that this is a Porsche killer, and I spent a lot of time thinking about my time at the event as well as what the Taycan means to the electric vehicle market. I think you're really gonna wanna listen to this because it's a different take on the Taycan, and I think this is, this is definitely not a Tesla killer, and I know a lot of people really I knew this was gonna happen because I knew the specs before they, re, they, they showed the actual vehicle. And I knew a lot of big Tesla supporters were going to be very critical of the specs. So let's just, let's just address the elephant in the room. This is definitely not a Tesla killer. Tesla is by far the market leader in the electric vehicle market. Their range, their performance, their supercharger network are overwhelmingly convincing. That being said, I don't think that the Porsche Taycan has to be a Tesla killer in order to be successful in this EV market. Now, with this vehicle, as they start producing this, this is going to address a very particular market. This is not a Model 3 market at $40,000 to $55,000. This is a $80,000, $85,000 to $180,000 market. And what I think will happen is this will address the Porsche customer, current customer market, people who have been longtime Porsche customers, this is going to be a car that they really will really enjoy. It's familiar, it's got that Porsche brand and Porsche performance, which I'll get to in just a moment, but I wanna just give a summary of the whole experience at this Porsche Taycan event. So I got there on a Tuesday, they had a presentation, or they called it a keynote, talking about the history of Porsche which I thought was really insightful. Prior to this event, I didn't really have much context to Porsche in their history, so I thought that that was really, really helpful. After we finished that event, then we went to a dinner where uh, journalists and, and media uh, were able to connect and just sort of talk over, over a really good meal and, and good drinks. And so uh, the backdrop of this dinner was Niagara Falls, and it was just spectacular. I, I, I made sure and sit next to a window and uh, I was able to look out to the right and just see beautiful Niagara Falls. So I thought that was a really great backdrop. And then the following day, early in the morning, they had this, uh, this, this presentation, this event where they showed off the Porsche Taycan for the very first time. This was a, a simultaneous cast where they did not only a uh, presentation uh, in, in real time in North America, but also in Germany as well as China. So I thought that was really interesting, but during the event they didn't really uh, highlight any of the other simul simulcast uh, from, from other parts of the globe as we were there in the, uh, in the auditorium that was sort of this makeshift black box. And uh, they did the presentation. Again, they gave a little bit of backdrop of, of the vehicle, of the history of Porsche in this in, 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 in breaded, uh integrated, performance uh, culture into uh, in, into the car and into the history as well as the Taycan. And then they pulled out the Taycan and it, it, it was incredibly beautiful. It's a beautifully designed car. It's one of my favorite parts about this vehicle. I just think that it looks phenomenal. In my opinion, I think that this is the best designed Porsche that they sell to date. So what I wanna do is get into some of the advantages and disadvantages of this vehicle, and then I wanna talk about why this is more of a Porsche killer versus a Tesla killer. So what were some of my favorite things about this vehicle? Well, as I mentioned before, the design is just incredible. The fit and finish on this is extremely exquisite, and it's something that you would expect from a Porsche who's been producing vehicles for a number of decades. The other thing that I really like about this vehicle is the performance aspect. Now, I haven't had a chance to drive this vehicle yet, and I really hope that this is a vehicle that I can sometime very soon get behind the wheel of. So Porsche, if you're watching this, uh, I would love to uh, have an invitation to get this on the track and really test drive this and do another review. 
of how it performs. But the performance aspects of this vehicle are still quite remarkable. Does it top the Performance Model S? No, it doesn't, but it gets really, really close. So even though it doesn't beat the specs of the Performance Model S, I think that's acceptable, and I think that's completely okay. So for people who are looking for a performance vehicle that's not a Tesla, I think this is going to be a fantastic vehicle and a very viable option. The performance specs are some of the best that Porsche has to offer, and it is almost like Porsche is turning over a new leaf and entering into this electrification of their offering. Let's talk about the downside of this vehicle. I think that the range, the vehicle range for the price is definitely a letdown. I was really hoping for something that was closer to 300 miles of range rather than under 250 miles of range. This is, a, this is a very high priced vehicle and it would be great to get something that's a little bit more competitive to similar price luxury electric sedans, i.e. Tesla Model S. The other elephant in the room is the DC fast charging network. Now, if you watch my previous video on the Audi e-tron, I did highlight on this a little bit. This is definitely one of the most promising DC fast charging networks in North America. I think that they're investing a lot of money into this and in, you know, let's say two to four years. I think that the density of the DC fast charging network will be something that could be viable to get people around when they do their road trips. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that most people charge their electric cars at home and 200 to 250 miles plus of range is plenty to get people to and from work as well as any trips throughout the state within a couple of hours. And lastly, the autonomy piece. This is something that Porsche did touch on a little bit, though I have this inclination that Porsche is going to be much further behind than Tesla when it comes to the actual vehicle self-driving. Nonetheless, this is designed to be a performance vehicle, and it's designed to be driven, not, not for the car to drive the driver, but for the driver to actually drive the vehicle. So let's not forget electric vehicles in general are incredibly fun to drive and the Porsche Taycan is no exception. Now, why is this the Porsche killer? I think that when you compare spec by spec by spec with what Porsche offers, this is overwhelmingly a convincing vehicle for someone who wants performance, handling, and just an everyday fun daily driver. So let's actually go through some of these specs. The Taycan Turbo has 670 horsepower, 626 pound-feet of torque, 0 to 60 in 3 seconds, 161 miles per hour top speed, 11.1 second quarter mile, and a 0.22 drag coefficient with a weight of 5,132 pound curb weight. The Turbo S Taycan offers 750 horsepower, 774 pound-feet of torque, 2.6 0 to 60, 10.8 second quarter mile, 161 top speed, 0.25 drag coefficient, and 5,121 pound curb weight. How does that compare to some of their other offerings on the turbo and S side of things? Well, the Panamera Turbo offers 550 horsepower, 567 pound-feet of torque, 3.6 0 to 60, 190 mile per hour top speed, 0.31 drag coefficient, and 4,579 pound curb weight. The Panamera 4S, 440 horsepower, 405 pound-feet of torque, 4.20 to 60, 179 mile per hour top speed, 0.29 drag coefficient, and 4,296 pound curb weight. The 911 Turbo, 540 horsepower, 486 pound-feet of torque, 2.9 second 0 to 60, 198 miles per hour top speed, 3,517 pound curb weight, and a 0.31 drag coefficient. The 911 Turbo S is 580 horsepower, 516 pound-feet of torque, 2.8 second 0 to 60, 205 mile per hour top speed, 3528 pound curb weight. And finally, the 911 GT2 RS, 690 horsepower, 553 pound-feet of torque, 2.70 to 60, 211 mile per hour top speed, a 3241 pound curb weight and a 0.35 drag coefficient. One of the things that stands out to me about the Porsche Taycan when you compare it against their other offerings of some of their most popular vehicles is that the Porsche Taycan is 
equal, if not better, in specs than what they have to offer on their gasoline lineup. And this is why I think that the Taycan is more of a Porsche killer than a Tesla killer. This is a very familiar car for people who are coming from other Porsche vehicles. And I think that the performance specs definitely best almost every single performance Porsche gasoline variant. And I think this vehicle will do really, really well inside of that Porsche lineup. And maybe, just maybe, it might convince some other electric vehicle owners to cross that divide and try a different vehicle. What I think you're going to get if you're coming from, for example, Tesla to Porsche, I think you're going to see a remarkable increase in improvement in that build quality, in the materials that are used in the vehicle. Do I think that there are some deficiencies in the Taycan? Yes, I do. Do I think that it's a Tesla killer? No, I don't but I think it's a fantastic start for Porsche and everyone has a beginning. So my thought about this Porsche Taycan is that I like it a lot. In fact, I would consider driving it now. Do I have the money to spend $150,000 on a, an electric vehicle? Yeah, but I probably wouldn't do it. I think that there's other better places to spend my money, but overall, this vehicle makes me really, really excited. And I think that those who are open to the Porsche brand and open to Porsche's very first electric vehicle, I think that you'll be extremely happy. This is Sean Mitchell, All Things EV. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you're a regular, hit the like button, and I'll see everyone on the next video.